welcome All Nations Church. We restore and release potential in people by connecting them to God. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to All Nations Church Carrie's house. We are very happy that you're worshiping with us today. Our Bishop Dr. Frank Ofosuapia and Reverend Mrs. Mary Ofosuapia welcomes you. At All Nations Church Carrie's house, we restore and release potential in people by connecting them to God. This morning's service will be live on all our social media platforms. We will be live on Facebook, we will be live on YouTube, and we will be live on Twitter. Please pick up your phones and tablets. Let us all share, invite our friends and families, and we believe that their lives will never remain the same. Are we ready to worship? Yes. Are we ready to uplift the name of the Lord? Yes. With a shout offering, please, let us all welcome Karis Worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good. We are in the fifth month of the year. We are in the month of May. Month speaking grace. And God has been good. Been good. God has been good. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, because of God's grace, you have been saved. Because of God's grace, you have been set free. Because of God's grace, you can praise the name of the mighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is what we come to do this morning to give our Father a mighty praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. This song is very simple. If you don't know it, you will learn it in a few seconds. Okay, it goes like this.
is summer and winter. Come on now. Springtime and harvest. Somebody in the house this morning that is a product of grace. 
Jesus. Ah, somebody that knows that it is not by your strength, it is not by your intellect or ability, but it is by his grace, it's by his mercies that we stand here today. some over here who will need some let's go ahead and get it to them just lift up your hands just wave at us wherever you are if you don't have it so we can get it to you if you don't have it just wave at us we have some on the side some at the back and if you're online and you're uh, partaking in this go ahead and get your emblems go ahead and get your uh, wine your bread as we go ahead and do it we want everyone to partake in this. We have some more hands up. Let's go ahead and get it to them online. Go ahead and join us as we do this. Go ahead and join us as we do this. Um, as they get it to them, I'll go ahead and read the scripture. Then we'll go ahead and get it done. Amen. Uh, God has been good, hasn't he? Amen. He's been good to us. We'll go ahead and do it. We'll go ahead. I believe there's some more people who need it. If you still need it, just lift up your hands online. We are with you. We're giving you the time to also grab your emblems and grab your stuff so we can do it. Um, we'll go ahead and do it. Hallelujah. He, he paid the debt. He did not owe. I owe the debt. As we get it to them. I could not pay. I needed some more. To wash my sins away Now I can sing We're almost there. A brand new song Amazing grace Yes indeed we're in a month of grace Lord Jesus paid a debt That I could never pay Let's go ahead and go ahead and read it 1 Corinthians 11 Let's, let's go ahead and do it because of time. First Corinthians eleven twenty three. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, the Bible said he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. We'll go ahead and take the bread. The Bible said, After the same manner, also, he took the cup when he had sap, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do ye often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Go ahead and take the cup. Just lift up your voice and thank him. 
As you've done it, Father, we exalt you. Father, we exalt you. Father, we thank you for allowing us to partake in this. We lift up your voice. We lift up your name. We exalt you. We lift up our voices and glorifying you for all you've done and all you continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Oh, is that how you celebrate? Is that how you celebrate Jesus? I thought we'll have some radical people in the house. Is somebody excited that you are in the month of May? That God has been good to you? That regardless of what the enemy did, somehow God has kept you? Sometimes you have to ask yourself if the Bible says the wages of sin is death. death, And you look at your life and all the things that you have went through, which at the end of the day, if the wages of the payment of sin is death, my, me and you, we should have been dead. So if it had not been for his grace... If it had not been for him who had had mercy on us. Is there somebody here who was saying that my life is by his grace? Can you put your hands together and exalt the Lord who has kept you all the way till now? Listen, this is All Nations Caris House. We are releasing potential in people and connecting them to God. Listen, this morning your life will never be, remain the same. The, the topic today will blow your mind, so please buckle your seatbelt. It's about to get even better. Let's put our hands together as we welcome Karis Worship. Hallelujah. We're still in an attitude of gratitude. We tell this God that we are grateful. Jesus, thank you. You looked me on me, oh. You looked me on me, oh. You looked past my sin, my shame, and my guilt, and you poured your love. You looked me on me, oh. You looked me on me, oh. And I'm the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy Daddy, 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 I'm no one That you have shown me mercy You have shown me mercy You have shown me mercy Do I have anyone testifying with the goodness of the Lord? In this place, Lord We thank you, Lord We adore you, Lord We praise you, Lord For everything you've done, Lord You look Beyond me, every flower, every shame, everything. You look past my sin. There's medicine, 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 medicine. You look beyond me. I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one. You have shown me mercy. I deserve mercy.
position ourselves to encounter and utilize the presence and power of God to do great things in the world. It is the day to empower God's people to walk in dominion of all aspects of life and leadership. It is the season to engage the nations for the cause of the King and His Kingdom. It is the season for new challenges, new achievements, and new levels of productivity. These are the days of His power. These are the days of His grace. These are the days of His majesty. 2023, our year of exploits. Please stand and welcome our senior pastor, Dr. Frank Ofosu Apia. Somebody give it to him today. Bless the Lord. Pray it up one more time. Come on. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poor child. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. Just in the You look past my sin, my shame, my shame, and poor child. You look beyond me. You look beyond me. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. And the hands of my arms, my father has shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one, I'm the one you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Yes. Has God shown anybody mercy in the house? Let's celebrate the mercy of God today. His mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. The Bible says that if God should mark iniquity, who will stand in his presence? I don't know about you, but I'm a product of God's mercy. I should have died, but I'm still here. I should have been destroyed, but I'm still here. Made terrible mistakes, but we are still here. His mercies are renewed every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Somebody bless the Lord before you sit down today. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Welcome to first service. Are you excited like I am? Yes, before you are seated, there are so many hundreds of people worshiping with us. We are live on Facebook, we are live on YouTube, we are live on Twitter and IG. Let's make our social media family feel very welcome. God richly bless you. We love you. We really do. Please be seated and let's make Kerry's worship feel appreciated. Thank you guys. Thank you. You are the best. You are the bomb. Amen and amen. Well, good morning again. How are you? Did I hear only the men say good morning? For once. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, okay, okay, it's a balance. But um, 
We bless God. We, mommy and I were away for a little while. You miss, no, you didn't miss me. <laughs> no, no, you didn't miss me. Don't miss me, please. <laughs> but uh, well, we were away for a little, a little while. Um, a few of our sons and daughters, pastors in uh, all over North America, put together this uh, vacation for mommy and I um, to go away for a little time on a cruise. And being an African from the bush, <laughs> putting me on the sea, <laughs> I don't know whether it was a punishment, it was to try my faith, it was to put the fear of God in my heart, I am not too sure. But it's one of the best experiences that I've ever had. Amen. Amen. One of the best experiences. It was very good. Especially in my capacity as official photographer. A lot of people say, Papa, you are not posting. I say, how can I post when I'm the one, when I'm the one cutting the thing? <laughs> but it was a very wonderful experience. We, we, we got a boat from New York and sailed the whole of the Atlantic Ocean to, to Europe. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> very interesting. You know, when I look at the television in our suite and I watch where we are, and I say, so if anything happens, who will find me? <laughs> You know all these thoughts that trouble human beings. I know you are perfect, but I'm just confessing my sins. We just sang about mercy, you know. But but it was very very brilliant experience. We went to uh, Portugal, we went to Spain, we went to France, and then we ended up in Rome. And last Sunday we went to church at the Vatican, the Vatican City. I went to introduce myself to the Pope, to <laughs> and unfortunately, you know, he wanted to see me, but um, he hadn't really prepared to see me, so I told him. I had better things to do, but I, I encountered the might of the Catholic Church. Oh my, this is something else. And so um, we, we thank God for all of you, our pastors. Thank you for holding the fort, our leaders. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, and for all the pastors, sons and daughters who did this, I know some of you may be watching. I've spoken to almost all of you, but I want to say thank you again. Long may it continue. Long may it continue. <laughs> Amen. Are, are we ready for some word today? Yes. Are you sure? How many of you were either in, per, uh, in person or online on Wednesday? No, okay, two and a half people, that's fine. <laughs> but, um, you know, our word for this year, the word that God has given to us for this year, um, comes from Daniel chapter 11 and verse number 32. Um, for the people that know their God, not somebody else's God, but their God, they are the ones who shall be strong, and then they will do great exploits. In fact, it qualifies the exploits, great exploits. So this is a year of exploits, great exploits, things that will distinguish you. And every month, we have our themes, and the fifth month is the month of grace. Grace, the number five is the month of grace. I'm not into numerology, but these things are re really there. And so this month, the theme is grace for exploits. And uh, as I th thought about this thing called grace, um, one, of my, one of my determinations at this stage of my life is to really, really open up my heart again and reinvestigate what God is saying and what he is not saying. Because many times, especially from the denomination and the strand of Christianity that I have found myself in, I realize that we, as, we do a lot of assumptions, especially when it comes to the word of God. And so we hear things from sincere but flawed preachers who also carry flawed theology, and the more it goes on, the more it becomes like truth. And so I determined that I need to look at this once again, because for us as charismatics, our biggest determination is the doing, 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 instead of the being, being, being. And we forget that we are first of all human beings before we, we are human doings. Amen. And everything around you and everything that you do is informed by who you are. No matter how gifted a cook or chef you are, you cannot make good omelets out of bad eggs. It's very important. And so I began to, so on Wednesday night, if you're here, when I talked about sufficient grace, we looked at the true manifestation of grace from the standpoint of God's word. I told you that I discovered 32 renderings of grace. And on Wednesday, we talked about 10 of them, saving grace, um, promotion grace, provision grace, preaching grace, all of these things are there. 
And today, I, I want us to look at another dimension of grace. Because I told you on Wednesday night that for many people, grace, they think that grace is the freedom to do everything that you want. And we looked at Romans and said that, shall we continue saying that grace may abound? And he said, no, we shouldn't do that. Grace, liberty is not the freedom to do what you want. Liberty is the freedom to do what God wants you to do. Amen. Then we also saw that grace is not exemption from effort. Because sometimes when you ask people who have accomplished things, how did you do this? And they tell you, oh, it's just grace. They are telling you that, don't waste my time, I won't tell you. Because grace is not an exemption from effort. There's nobody who achieved anything without effort. Effort is part of divinity. God worked. Jesus said, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Jesus said, my father works hitherto and I also work. So when you work, then grace empowers the work that you do. If you don't study for that exam, no amount of grace will bring you supernatural recall. I know I'm busting your bubble, but that's fine. And so, we are going to look at this thing called grace from a very personal, I'm taking this thing very personal today. And I'm going to take my time to teach you the word of God. I'm standing today in an office and grace of a teacher to teach the word. Because the grass fades, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God abides forever. The thing that will change you and I and make us into the image of Christ is his word. Amen. When we look into the perfect law of liberty and the claims of God's word is laid upon our hearts, then we are transformed. But grace is such an amazing concept in the Bible. Grace. Grace is the nature of God. Grace is God's goodness in action. On Wednesday, I declared that grace is God being God. You can never purchase grace. You can never earn grace. It's God's favor, mercy that he gives to you. You are not as undeserving as we are. From the portals of heaven, he decides to give us his grace. It is grace that reached out from the holy portals of heaven into the abyss and the abject pit of human misery and weakness and depravity and showed us mercy and favor and lifted us up. All of us seated here, listen, people of God, we are products of grace. Had it not been for the grace of God, you and I would not be here. I know you are, you are perfect. Ephesians chapter number 2, told you I'll be using a lot of scriptures. The first 10 verses, the apostle said, you he made alive who were dead. Once upon a time, you and I were dead in trespasses. That means we could do things and didn't care. Because how dead can a dead person be? We are dead. It's like, how do you wonder when you see a fish swimming? It's a fish. Do you wonder when you see a dog barking? So, in trespasses and sin, that is who we were. We were dead. But look at what he did. He made us alive. I've shared my testimony before that for 20 something years. I didn't know Christ and I lived a little bit outside, uh, outside of town and I never heard a bird sing. I never did. I never thought there were creatures around me because every day I was in the spirit. I didn't walk alone. I am with you always. I understood it before I got born again. But the night that I gave my life to the Lord, that Wednesday night, the next morning, suddenly I heard creation sing. He had made me alive. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Please, 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 quickly, quickly. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sense of disobedience. Amongst whom you also all once conducted you. All of us were like that. Listen, when you have had a breakthrough in a, play, in a particular place in life, don't look down on somebody. Don't judge somebody because you sin differently from them. You wait. Fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind and where we were by nature the children of wrath. Just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love which he loved us, 
even when we're dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, 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 in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. I wish I had time to just exit it line by line. For by grace, you have been saved. Not through your good works, not through giving offerings, not through build, building buildings, but by grace, you have been saved. Through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of your works, lest anyone should boast. And for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in it. John told us in John 1 and 16 that of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. So we are a people of grace. His grace found us and his grace will lead us. But today my burden is this. What do you and I do with the grace that found us and the grace that has been given to us? That is my burden today. What do we do with the grace? We talk about grace. We have read it. He has made us. He has given us. He has shown us grace. But what do we do with that grace? In one short answer before I unpack this then, we need to give the grace out. I said we need to give the grace out. Jesus said that freely have you received and freely give. If he has shown you grace, he has shown you mercy, he wants you and I to go out there and do the same thing. Am I talking to somebody? And one of the greatest exponents of God's grace is that once upon a time, Medra, Syria killer called Saul of Tarsus, who grace encountered on the way to Damascus. Grace changed him and grace gave him revelation. On Wednesday, I talked about that. That he was given, <coughs> excuse me, he was given deep revelation. And Paul even said in Ephesians 3 and 8 that even though I am the least of the saints, I've been given grace to preach. On Wednesday, I talked about preaching grace. That there are people that God gives grace to preach. What they will say for people to clap, if you don't have that grace and you say it, they'll beat you up. It's grace. It is grace. It is, it is grace, my friend. It is grace. And he says that I'm, I'm least of all the saints, but grace has been given to me. What is that grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable, the grace of Christ. And so Paul begins to unpack some things, and that is where my burden is today. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm, that is where our teaching comes. So put on your seatbelt and let's go. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 1, Ephesians 4 and 1, quickly. Are we having issues with our machine? Grace, 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 grace. I therefore, okay, we got it. I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. You know, we don't hear a lot of it today in the church. God will bless you. God will promote you. He will break the teeth of your enemies. When they go on dating, there will be a broccoli found in their teeth. Their lipstick will be all over the place. They will look like ogres. That, that's all we are interested in. That's all we are interested in. It's only the gifts that we are interested in. But it says that we must, when we, we have been called, we must walk in a particular way. Number one, with humility. Humility. What a disappearing virtue in the body of Christ today. We are so arrogant. Our body language, our talk, our walk, arrogant. We cannot overlook the mistakes of other people. Gentleness with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Today I told you, we are going to become Christians. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Unity. If we realize this, we will not split churches. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Go ahead, please. Let's do this quickly for me. I beg you. I am begging you. We are having issues there. One God and Father of all is above all, through all, and in you all. Now look at this. But to each one of us, 
Grace was given according to the measure of Christ's grace. So who has grace? Anybody? All of us have been given grace. Now, when you read the whole thing, the things that Paul is telling us, if we, if we follow after that, we will never fight. Mm -mm. We will never fight. But go to verse 25 through 29, then I'll begin to finish. In the light of everything that he has said, therefore, anytime you see the therefore, ask the why the therefore is therefore. Number one, putting away lying. Sit up straight, sit up straight. Putting away lying. Lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Which means when I lie about you and you lose something, I also lose the same thing. You are okay to be angry. But don't let the anger let you sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give the devil topos. That's where we get topography, space. Let the one who stole steal no longer. Don't shoplift. Don't take things that don't belong to you in the church. When you borrow people's things, return them. Rather let the one labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give to him who has need. That's a ministry. This is where my burden is. This is where my burden is. This one, one verse is what we are going to deal with. Do not let corrupt words come out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearer. So I'm talking to you on the ministry of grace. Please give me that verse 29 in the NIV. Let me do work with that. I said a lot of amens this morning because I may not get some from you. Give me the NIV verse 29 of Ephesians 4 if you are able. Let's look at this. Then let's unpack that. The NIV. If you can have it other than that, then okay. Let me, let me try and get it from here. NIV. It says that NIV. Don't try my grace. <laughs> I, maybe they're having issues with it. Some, sometimes these things misbehave. But listen, it says, listen carefully. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Paul, speaking on behalf of the Holy Spirit, from verse number one, when we read, he said, now that you have been born again, shed the old patterns of life, the, the life that you lived before you met Christ, and then begin to walk in newness. And one of them, according to here, and that is my burden today, is that we must recalibrate our language and our vocabulary. Remember he said in verse number 7 that all of us have been given grace. And he said we should minister that grace. We should give that grace. He has given us grace and that grace must be given to others. So in effect, you and I are ministers of grace. Can you tell somebody, that person that I'm a minister of grace? Amen. Oh, please say it like you mean it. Or oh, say it like you. You, you. you are evangelists of grace. And that grace must be given first of all by the words that we speak. I'm sure all of you will remember how somebody's kind words impacted you and made you feel loved in your life. I am sure the way somebody spoke about you and the way they spoke to you formed a good part of your life. A lot of people are damaged today because of words that have been spoken over their lives. You became the pawn on the chess table of your parents. So sometimes when your mom cannot confront your dad, she will confront your dad through you. Look at your head like somebody I know. 
<laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about? And gradually these things are said over us and said over us and said over us and then they affect us. Hear me? The words we say, the words we speak, and the words we hear, they have tremendous impact in our lives. This generation, this generation that we are in, we are using more words than any time in human history because of social media. This morning, I, I, I went to Facebook in the morning to, see, to look at our advert so I can share it again. And mommy walked in the room and I said, where I come from? Ghana, I come from Ghana. I said, people can't talk. She said, are you telling me or you are just advising me? <laughs> it's like, come on. What kind of culture is this? If, if talking could make nations prosperous, the nation I was born in would be the richest on earth. Don't look at me like that. You think I've started? I haven't even started. I'm coming your alley. I said, we, we can't talk. Talk nation. Lord have mercy. And today we are talking. People are talking. People are talking on Facebook. We are talking on IG. We are talking on Twitter. We are talking on WhatsApp. We are talking on email. And we are talking on talk. Even at table, when people are eating, when people are eating, one of the things I do when I go to eat, family, whatever, the fa I put my, either my cell phone in my pocket or I leave it in the car. Because you went to talk. And sometimes I sit around the table with my family and somebody seated next to me, not mommy, but that, no, no, not her, not her, not her. Test me, daddy, could, can you pass me the sword? Like, seriously? My, now my children communicate, they are in their bedroom and they are calling me daddy on, on. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? And gradually, but words are flying constantly. And you know what? They are shaping our world. When you look in the Bible, words are powerful. In fact, the first mention of words came from God. God was the first one to speak. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And, in the, and the Bible says in verse number three, and the Lord God said, many times, every day, and the Lord God said, and the Lord God said, and he created you and I with the same ability to use words. When God said, let us make man in our own image, he was saying that how I operate I want you to do the same thing. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 7, God formed the dust of the earth and created some, and the Bible says that, and the Lord God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, ruach, the breath of life, and man became a living being. The literal Hebrew says that, and man became a speaking spirit. So listen, how God creates is how you become creative on earth. Words. In verse number 19 of Genesis 2, the God formed everything and the Bible says he brought them to, I'm building a case. He brought them to Adam to see what Adam will call them. To see what Adam, so which means God didn't name anything. Everything that he had created, I didn't print it, is there. And the Bible says that he wanted to see what Adam will call them. And whatever Adam called even living creature, every living creature, that was his name. So people of God, everything that we are speaking, we are empowering. Never forget that. We, have been given, we are the only creation of God who have been given power to use words to shape destiny. Power behind our words. From divinity to humanity, words are powerful. Exodus 21, Ten Commandments. And God spoke all these words. God spoke all these words. That is the Ten Commandments. In fact, the literal Hebrew, God spoke ten words. The Ten Commandments, God, the Hebrew says ten words. God used that and they govern us. So please hear me. Let the word of Christ be on your tongue every day. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse number 5 says that every word of God is pure. Every word of God is pure. Isaiah 55 and 11, so shall my word be that proceeds out of my mouth. It shall not come to me empty, void, but it shall go to accomplish the reason for which it was sent. The master said in Matthew 24 and 35 that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Jesus said in John 6 and 63 that the words that I speak they are spirit and they are life. Words. 
Hebrews 4 and 12 in the Amplified. It says that for the word that God speaks is alive, is powerful, is energizing. It, 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 it has inherent power. Look at that. The, 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 yes, the word that God speaks, the word is a living, active, full of power, making it operative, energizing, effective. Words sharper than any two edged sword. So, people, words that are spoken and words that are heard, they impact us more than we will ever know. Words can charge the atmosphere. I don't know about you, but if you're a spiritual woman or man, you can walk into a place and people have had words and they have put on makeup, but you can pick it in the atmosphere that this, word, this place is charged. Our words carry life. Our words carry death. Our words carry faith. Our words carry fear. Our words carry encouragement. And our words carry discouragement. In fact, direction follows sound. What you should never forget, people of God, is that words are not neutral. Once they go out of your mouth, they are going to accomplish something. And in Ephesians 4.29 that we read, the apostle is showing us the power of words, both destructive and constructive words. Like the same part of a coin. A coin has two sides. There's destructive side and then there's constructive side. And the destructive says, let no, let's, please NIV, NIV, let's do that. Let no unwholesome talk. Unwholesome. Somebody say unwholesome. unwholesome. Let, do not let any unwholesome talk. That word unwholesome in the Greek is sapros. That is rotten talk. Corrupt, profane. Something that is bad in its essence and nature. Ugly and disgusting. And he says that these things can come in your head. But don't let them come out of your mouth. Because once you unleash words, you can cause damage to people to environments. People who should be married by now to have children are not married because of your words. Somebody wants to marry somebody and they ask you, how is that sister? You don't think you are killing somebody's future. You have been forgiven and God has kept your secret. But that sister doesn't deserve it. But that is what I'm doing. <laughs> Why do we do this to ourselves? On wholesome talk, the texts that we send, the emails, the things that we put on social media, our words. Once you press send, you don't get them back. That is why the psalmist said in Psalm 141 verse 3, he says, set a guard over my lips. Keep watch over the door of my mouth. Which means, listen, you may think it, but keep your thoughts to yourself. Don't give words to your thoughts and your feelings. I love the book of Proverbs. I really do. You cannot follow a wise man and be stupid. Let me give you a couple of them. Proverbs 12, 28. It says that there is he that speaks like the, speak, like the piercing of a sword. There is one who speaks. They are not in church today, but they speak like they're piercing. They will not assassinate you with a knife, but they are words. The NIV says reckless words. They pierce in. There are people who have been, their sense, their sense of being is gone because of what you said. Words. Proverbs 18, 21 says that the power of life and death is resident on your tongue. Please give me James chapter 3. Please give me James, James chapter 3. From verse number 2. I told you I'll use a lot of words for today. Did I indicate? Thank you. Please let's really try my words. He says that we shouldn't be in any rush to become a teacher. Those of you who want microphone, your microphone will judge you. I know today people's idea about ministry is microphone or standing under light. There are some of us who wish we weren't standing here. I kid you not. 
That's the charismatic understanding. If you don't give them microphone, they are not doing ministry. I went to the church, they are not even using me. You want microphone? When I'm here, what do you want again? Don't be any rush to become it because whatever you are teaching will test you. It says teaching is highly responsible work. And teachers are held to the strictest standards. And none of us is perfectly something qualified. We get it wrong, me, nearly every time we open our mouths. If you could find somebody whose speech is perfectly true, you'll find a perfect person. In perfect control of life. He's talking about your tongue. A bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse. A small rudder on a huge ship in the hands of a skilled captain sets the course of the face of the, in the, in the face of strongest winds. Now look at this. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account. But it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. People's lives are destroyed because of your words. You are a liar. There's something wrong with you. You are a witch. It's not funny. Something wrong. You have issues. It only takes a spark, remember, to set off a forest fire. You saw what happened in California when somebody was, was, was jailed because they left a little forest fire. A careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that. By our speech, we can ruin the world or turn harmony into chaos. Have you realized in churches, in groups, somebody's one person in that group kills harmony and there's chaos. Throw mud on a reputation. Send the whole world up in smoke. Go up in smoke with it. Smoke right from the pit of hell. This is scary. That's what the Bible says. You can tame a tiger, but you can't tame a tongue. It's never been done. But I know it can be done because of the Holy Spirit. The tongue runs wild. A wanton killer. The tongue is a wanton killer. Look at it. Look at the contrast. With our tongues, we come to church. We have fun, mercy. Worship, worship, worship. We bless God. Hallelujah. Blessed Father. And that same tongue, we curse the very men and women who are made in the image of Christ. Curses and blessings out of the same mouth. My friend, how does this work? He says, this can go on. Can go on. Watch your words, my friend. Watch your words. Not only the words you speak, but those that you listen to. The preachers you are constantly listening to. Because whoever is informing you. Paul turns the coin around. Let me get out of this. And he admonishes us to be ministers of grace. That is our calling. Listen, in order to be a minister of grace, you don't need to go to Bible school. You don't need laying out of hands. You don't need an ordination. You just need a tongue that is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please give me my scripture in the NIV. It says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Then it goes on to say, It says that, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. So let me unpack this, then I'll step out of your way. So number one way to be a minister of grace is to speak things that are helpful. Somebody say helpful. helpful. Say it. Helpful. Listen to me. From today, can you determine that my words will be helpful rather than hurtful? My words must become a form of ministry into people's lives. He says only that which is helpful. The word helpful, Greek, agathos. It means inherent goodness. Inherent goodness. And remember one of the fruits of the spirit, Galatians 5.22, is goodness. Goodness. I think one time I told mommy that I think I need to teach on kindness. Just think, this thing called kindness. Because sometimes charismatics. Simple kindness. We don't have it. We are so full of ourselves that we cannot be kind. Show simple kindness. I, I think about, Pastor Sam, I think about that, that man lying down, beaten by 
thieves on the road. You know why Jesus told that parable? Of the good Samaritan? The first person that came there was a priest. He was in a hurry to go to church. So he jumps over the man. He's in a hurry. Another one, he's a Levite. Great man of God to do a crusade. He jumps over the van. Jesus is telling the church something. We are jumping over hurting people to rush to go and do praise and worship, to rush and go and teach, to rush and go and dance, to rush, and people are lying there. No kindness, no help. I told you the other day, I think so, the last Friday, good, good, good Friday, I don't normally go to our church security cameras, but on that Sunday morning, I felt the strong edge. Go, go. And so I just, it was about 3 a.m. And I said, what's going on? So maybe I felt the Lord was just giving me a heads up that maybe people are breaking in or something. So I went in there and I saw somebody in the cold lying in front of our building, our church door. And I woke up and I said, look at this. So I looked at the man. He was, he had, it, it was cold. And I, for about one hour, I was watching the thing. I wanted to get up. I actually called Ben Pencil. Like, Ben, there's somebody lying in front of our door. The pastor must be cold. All night, I couldn't sleep again. And I woke up very early. Went to bed pray. I couldn't even pray well. I kept looking at the man. Then getting to the light of day. Christians started coming to church. And I saw the man packed his things. Christians walked right past him and went, came into this sanctuary. And the Lord said, I let you see that to see the state of the people you are pastoring. I wept like a baby. Ask her, she will tell you. Why are we like this? So we cannot be helpful. The people are hurting. Help. That should be your nature. You should be a good person. When they were looking for the first deacons, the Bible says that people who are good, Stephen was a good man before filled with the Holy Spirit. Good. We talk about God is good. Remember Jesus said that out of the abundance of your heart, Matthew 12, a good out of the good things of your heart, speak. What you speak reveal your soul. Your words are the mirror of your soul. So when you store up all kinds of things in your heart, they come out. Let your words help and not hurt. And if you cannot say anything good, please, zip the lip. Give me my scripture again. I know they won't say amen, but I'm fine. G give me the Ephesians. Give me the Ephesians. Let no unwholesome words come out of your mouth. And it says that but only what is helpful. You see that? Did you see that? Yes. For building others. So I told you it's only one scripture I'm using. So number two, your words must build others up. In effect, your words must never tear people down. This word build up 11 times in the New Testament, in the Greek, it talks about edify. In the old, it says edify, build up. It's like strengthening people, making them stronger. Building a house on a strong foundation. Romans 15 and 1 and 2. I told you I'll give you a lot of scriptures, then I'll begin to finish. Romans 15. The day I'm using a lot of scriptures, it says, what you, who, We then who are strong, we ought to bear the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Church, listen. When you come here, you have individuality and you have a corporate life. And if you are strong in something, you don't drink anymore. Please, don't judge the one who is eating too much. You have, you have had victory over a particular place in your life. We know, we applaud you, we have given you a medal. But for those of us who are struggling, can you have mercy on us? The Apostle Paul said that if any one of you is overtaken in a fault, you that are spiritual, ought to restore that person, restore, catadizo, set it like a broken bone. Like an orthopedic surgeon working on a broken bone. Gentleness. Considering yourself, lest you also be overtaken. That's Galatians 6 and 1. Please, my friend, speak words that will benefit. 1 Corinthians 14 and 12. He says that I've given you gifts and you are zealous. He said, let it be for edification of the church. Every gift that you have must build the church up. 
What is it about that as God gives us gifts and we want to walk over everybody? It's my gift. Who told you? The same person who gave you that gift can take it from you. I think I've told you my experience one day when I was in grad school in California, Fuller Seminary, Pasadena. One Sunday afternoon, I felt strong by the Holy Spirit. Just get in your car, drive to downtown Los Angeles. So I have no business. I don't know. Say so go. And I followed. I parked my car as I was led by the Spirit. And I was just, I got out of the car and I said, Lord. And he wouldn't say anything. Then I see this man. And the man is preaching on the street. He's giving out tracts. He has a ponytail, white shirt, faded jeans, flip flops. And I looked at him, and I said, hmm, this guy looks familiar. And I kept watching him, and I kept watching him. Then the light came up. That's Jim Baker. And if anybody knows Jim Baker, at a point in the 80s, he had the most powerful ministry in America, PTL. And came out of Charlotte, North Carolina. He went through things, and it was Christians who sold this man out. He was jailed for 80 years. Jamie Buckingham, one of my favorite authors, wrote in Charisma Magazine that when I saw Jim Baker, God's man of grace and power, in handcuffs being taken to jail, all I said is thank God for those of us who have not been caught. <coughs> and I looked and I said, Jim Baker, every month he was making over $15 million offerings coming into his ministry through television. One mistake. People he trusted who let him down. And the Lord said, I brought you here to see this. That if I gave it to you, I can take it from you. That was worth more than my master's degree that I was trying to get. This one was not a master. It was a mastering degree to master you. And the Lord said, don't master the word. Let the word master you. I hope I'm teaching you. Use your gift. Give me verse 26 of that same verse. I hope I'm not troubling you too much. How is it, brethren? Whenever you come together, each of you have a psalm, teaching, talk. Everybody has one. Revelation, let all things be done for edification, for building. For building. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8, that the authority that is given to me is for edification, not for destruction. So when you have been given authority, church, leader, pastor, deacon, visioneer, whatever has been given to you is for building up, not for tearing down. So when you have been given an office in the house, remember this. When you are looking over a ministry, when you are looking over people, the last words of David in 2 Samuel 2, it says that, and the Lord spoke to me, the anointed one of Israel, the holy one, the sweet psalmist. And he said, he who rules over men must be just ruling in the fear of the Lord. That is leadership. That is why for some of us, we can't throw our weights about like some of our counterparts for you to fear us. But we abuse that too. He says that the things that are needful, According to the needs, the first thing, the third thing is according to the needs. As a minister, your primary commission is to meet needs. That is ministry. Please, I hope I'm teaching you. Yes. Say it again. Say yes. yes. Uh -huh. I told you I've taken all my amens before I came to church. We want to grow. I want you to grow. I want you to grow. On Wednesday night, I told you the first, one of the first scriptures that I memorized. As a young, born-again Christian, 79 or so, was grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus. Growth. That thing stuck with me when a, a retreat in a place called Aburi. That was the first scripture I memorized in my life. I felt so proud. But grow in the grace. We had youth. I was just about 20-something, 20 22 or so. So when you're a minister, please, your primary concern is to help the needs of others. When Israel was wallowing in bondage in Exodus 7, God said to Moses, I've seen the troubles of my people. I've heard their cry because of their attack. I know. They are, and because of that, I have come to rescue them. So when you see, when you know, when you hear, God has given you a ministry. That is why for me, John was the most powerful minister amongst the 12 of Jesus. He was the only one who had the privilege given by God to look on the nakedness of Jesus. Because Jesus was crucified, stark, naked, 
All the others had run away. The only one who saw it was John. So when God gives you an opportunity to see somebody's nakedness, he's giving you a ministry. Cover it. <laughs> Cover it. We talk to, we destroy people. We talk too much. Look at the powerful messages that have been taught in this house. You will hear them in Virginia. You will hear them in the city of London. It's lies that people hear. And for me, the painful thing is not the one who spoke the lies, but the one who chose to believe. They are the worst. They are the scavengers. And the way people believe lies. Look at the unction in this house. You never talk about what your pastor preached. Who is going out with somebody? Is that your business? If you were beautiful, they'll go out with you too. <laughs> what makes relationship work is when we look beyond people's faults and we see their needs. Because sometimes you don't know why people behave the way they behave. If you check why they are behaving the way they are behaving, you find out their history. Why, what do you suppose that when you go to your doctor or something, they give you these 18-page forms to fill? Who was your father? Was you a drunk? Was you a this? Did you smoke with it? It's not that they, it's they want to find something behind the thing. Why you are behaving the way you are behaving. So please, speak. When you, do, when you see a need, the first thing, speak verbally very well. Let your words be kind. Let your words be faithful. Tell people you'll be okay. Tell people things will happen for you. In, in, in psychology, there's this thing called the, the Pygmalion phenomenon, the Pygmalion effect. What is it? It's what you speak over people constantly is what they eventually become. They got a lot of money to research to find out what the Bible has been telling us all the time. That as a man thinks, so he is he. That Adam spoke and the thing became. So that is why I choose to preach the way I preach. You can have problems with me, preacher. But I speak into the king and the queen people. Everybody who is wrong knows they are wrong. I didn't go to Bible school to go and find out how to tell people how terrible they are. No. I came to tell them that you may be terrible, but something good can come out of you. Jesus met Simon Peter and he said, you are Simon, but you shall become Peter. You are weak. You are like a reed, but you shall become the rock upon which I will put my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. It is about time. Preacher, listen. This is your work cut out for you. Speak into the good of people. Speak into the need of people. Speak and let people know that they can become. This what is it about that, that we rejoice. Uh, mommy and I went to the particular church when we were in Canada, we came out and I said, what is wrong with this preacher? It's like this in your face. Bam, bam, bam. And I said, so you brought a hammer to come and hammer people like this? Let me tell you, you know why? The Pharisees and the scribes, they started very well. But somewhere along the line, they missed it. Because they mastered the art of judgment. They mastered the art of hammering people. And they went on and they became hypocrites. Listen to how God talks to us. He calls us a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a particular, a, a peculiar people. Why? He is speaking what we can become. And finally, he says that, that it may benefit those who listen. I know we all talk to benefit ourselves. To learn to benefit people. That word benefit. You know in the old King James, in the new King James, it said that, that it will minister grace. The NIV says it will benefit. The word benefit is the word grace. So this is a house of benefit. House of grace. Carries house. That's the word carries. That's what is grace. Amazing grace. And we all need it. We all need it. I told you the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they didn't do well at all. Look at uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verse 28 and 29. I hope you've learned something. I'm going, I'm going away. I'm stepping out of your way. Matthew chapter 7, verse 28. And so when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. The scribes were full of judgment. The scribes were full of telling people they are going to hell in a handbasket. Even though those people still know. Those of you who are going to hell, you know it. But he taught. He came into the synagogue, Luke 4, the spirit of the Lord was upon me. And after he had finished, in verse number 22 of Luke, number, and says, they all bore witness with him and marveled at the gracious words. Gracious words. Words that are full of grace. Speak for those that it will benefit your hearers. So my last question is, who is hearing you? 
Who is listening to you? Who are you influencing with your words? Who are you? Three people. Number one, when you speak, God hears you. God does. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. Said that those that feared the Lord spoke amongst each other. And the Lord heard them. And a book of remembrance was written. So the things that you are saying, a book is being written. So a lot of the things that some of you are going through is not because of curses or anything. It's consequence. They recorded your words and you are getting them back. Moses marries, marries a black woman. He marries a sister. And his siblings don't like it one bit. It's in Numbers 12. He says that and Aaron and Miriam were angry because Moses had married a Cushite, a black woman. And instead of going straight to it that we are racist, they use spiritual terms. It's in the church all the time. People use spiritual terms and the Lord showed me. And the, no, 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 your heart is wrong. Stop giving me spirit. You are racist. Stop using spirit. And the Bible says, and the Lord heard them. You may never know some people got removed from your life because he heard them in conversations that you didn't hear. The Lord heard them. And he called a staff meeting. He said, three of you, stand up. And when God says three of you, go to pastor's office. You know how it feels. And when they got there, he said, now two of you, step forward. And he said, how dare you Speak against my anointed. I hope the church will understand this. Today you fear nothing. There are some things that happen to people. I know the reason. But I won't speak the reason. It's not generational curse. It's your mouth that speaks against authority. And God himself said, were you not afraid to speak against my anointed? Church, let's go back to some old fashioned scripture. And things we don't understand. Keep quiet. Stop talking about great men, men and women of God. Stop it. I know people who are defeated preachers. And all they love is to talk about other preachers. I know them. Do I care about them? No. Jesus said, if you don't believe me, look at my works. Say, you dare not. Listen, church. Stop this sharing things about pastors. and doing, you, are, you are an evangelist of Satan. Instead of evangelist of grace. You think me, I don't know things? I know things. I, not that I've heard. I know things. Will they come out of me? No. One day when I'm dead at age 302. And you are alive by any chance and you see me. All you have to say is that the things that this man is carrying with him to his grave. Only God knows. Stop it. Not only God, but others hear your words. Are you concerned that others hear your words? What are your words doing to people? What are your words doing to people? Church, I think it's about time some of you must be bold enough to look at people in the face and tell them you cannot be my friend any longer because you are a gossip. Then finally you hear your own words. And finally, finally, I'm done. <laughs> this is one thing I'm asking. That for yourself, you say like the psalmist said in Psalm 19, 14, that let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Then number two, determine today that you will not be a repository of people's wrong talk. People are tired. Listen, there are people who will never darken the door of another church in their lives because of what words of Christians have done to them. If there's a safe place ever that people must go to, it's the church. When I used to drink a lot and things, listen, I felt safer sometimes in the nightclubs. Because those places we go, we drink, we let our head down and we tell secrets. And we don't hear it after tomorrow. Today, somebody even comes in a prophetic way. That's why I don't let cameras pick up when prophetic ministry is going on. 
people's mothers in Africa hear it. Why? What are you? And did he say, who are you? What are you? Grace. Talk to him and let's go home. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Let the words of my mouth. Today be a minister of grace. Walk in the ministry of grace. Let your words be seasoned with salt. Seasoned with grace. Minister grace to your hearers. Benefit. And whilst I'm there, please talk. Pray. If you have been hurt by people's words, they are affected. There's, there's an individual in this house. For one week, every time I called that lady, I said, don't leave church. I know God has shown me you want to leave. Don't go. Don't go. This is your place. Don't go. People's words are making you feel like you are nothing. But please, don't, I beg you, because I know what will happen when you go. If you have been hurt by people's words, I want to lay my hands on you. Just speak over you. For you to have your freedom. Step here and come to me. And for those of you who have hurt people with their words, some of you need to go and apologize. Go and apologize after church. Go to people. Be bold enough to say, Sister, sorry, please forgive me. You may not have heard it, but God heard it. You look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at it. Look at this. And these ones have been hurt by people who call themselves Christians. Today I came as your father with, with apostolic grace to talk to you. We have to change. Please listen. It doesn't take God anything to give you a breakthrough. God doesn't have to go and borrow to bless you. But we are hindered because of we. Pastors can't pastor. Leaders can't lead. Because we are afraid of people's mouths. People have been hurt. Sons and daughters, I want to pray for you today. The fact that somebody has gone through divorce doesn't make them a bad person. You don't know what they went through. You don't know what they went through. You are happily married. Keep your happy to yourself. Hypocrite. If you had the same opportunity, you do worse. Carry a burden. Just pray to God, Lord, don't let me cry before this congregation today. Sons and daughters are wounded. They are wounded. It's the church that we must hang around people. Love them. Tell them your secret is safe with me. You can come out of this. I've had people who, who are pastoring churches today. That if I hadn't stepped into their lives once upon a time, I wonder what would have happened. You think you are powerful because you know people's secrets? No. Anytime God shows you something, He has trusted you. He has trusted you. Cover people's nakedness. Just want to lay my hands on you, pray for you for your healing. I'm not going to say a lot. You carry burdens already. I prayed a lot for you before I showed up today. Let words be free. Be free. Just go free, my son. Just go free. Daughter, be free. Be free, my daughter. Be free from the effects of bad words. Be free. Daughter, be free. Be free, my daughter. Be free. Be free. Daughter, be free. Please, when I finish laying hands, please, you may be seated. My daughter, be free. Daughter, receive his healing for freedom. Be free. Be free. My daughter, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. My daughter, be free. Be free. 
Be free from the effects of people's words. Be free. Be free. Be free, my daughter. Be free. Daughter, be free. Be free, my daughter. Son, be free. Absolutely and completely. My son, be free. Daughter, be free. In the name of our Lord. Son, be free. In the name of the Lord. Be free. Be free. In the name of our Lord. Son, be free. In the name of our Lord. Listen. I'm looking into this camera and I'm talking to somebody. Social media is good. Internet is good. Christians have chased you out of some churches. Please go back. Don't let them determine your service for Christ. Because one day, you have no excuse when you stand before the Lord. Go back and serve. Go back and be free. And if it is this house, I want you to know this. This one. So long as God gives me breath and there's an anointing on my head, I will love you without judgment. I will tell you the truth, but I will love you. I will help you. I will pastor you. That's all I live for. That's all I live for. Let's give Lord the, some praise in the house. Let's let's sit down and let's prepare our offerings. Let's prepare our tithe and our offerings today. Let's give to the Lord. Let's give to the Lord. And please don't forget about our legacy project. Don't forget. I think I'll give it an emphasis again before we leave here. And at exactly 11.30, Gen X, Gen Next will start. It's going to be awesome. If you can hang around to be a support, let's do that. It's our first thing. Let's be generous today. Let's give. Those of you online, family and friends, don't log off. It's all there on your screens. Let's give.
morning. This is All Nations Carrot House, a place where we release potential in people by connecting them to God. On behalf of our senior pastor and first lady, Dr. Frank and Reverend Mary of Fosuapia, thank you for worshiping with us today. The month of May is our month to garner grace for exploits in our personal and spiritual lives. You're encouraged to adopt a barrier-breaking posture as the year progresses and participate in the activities for the month. Have you heard the news? <laughs> it is of grand proportion, so brace yourself. Our service times have changed starting today, as announced some weeks ago. Our family service time is at 9 a.m., and today is the start of our Gen X service starting at 11.30 a.m. every Sunday. This is for the 14 through 35 year age bracket to equip them for greater works. It is open to anyone who wants to attend service during that time. Let us support this initiative as our next generation sets out to do amazing exploits. Aren't you excited about the month of May? It's going to be a month full of action and surprises. Purposeful Women of Exploits as this year's Mother's Day themed as events starting this Friday, May 12th through the 14th as follows. On Friday, May 12th at 7 to 8.30 is Mother's at the Altar, a night of prayer. Saturday, the 13th at 9.30 to 12 p.m. is an in-person discussions, fun activities, and more. Breakfast will be served. Then, on Sunday the 14th, will be the grand finale Mother's Day celebration service at 9 a.m. Let us celebrate our exemplary and virtuous mothers. All events will be right here at 781 Athens Highway, Loganville, Georgia. See y'all. Grace Conference is upon us once again, and our guest speaker is none other than Reverend Bob Ando. The dates are May 18th, May 19th, and Sunday the 21st. You do not want to miss this. Come on down to Kara's House, 781 Athens Highway, to tap into the grace for exploits. Don't forget to save the date, take some time off, and get prepared for ISI 2023 from July 19th to the 23rd. It's going to be one for the books. Come and gain some knowledge for your ministry, business, and everyday life. Remember, it's tailored for us all. Registration will be opening soon, so make sure you don't miss out. If you own a business and are interested in being enlisted in our ANC business directory, please complete the listing form and drop it off at the bookstore. Forms will be available at the lobby, but must be dropped off at the bookstore. If you have any questions, please reach out to Ms. Rita at 404-578-3367. A gentle reminder is to visit our Mana bookstores for all your reading resources, the word of the year inscribed apparel, and a lot more. Let's continue to pray and encourage one another to stay connected to All Nations Care South on all the social media platforms. Until next time, this has been your Just Think partner, Nadia Kusi. For more information, please visit our website at allnationsusa.com or simply call the church office at 770-923-8383. Subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Stay blessed. Thank you, Nadia, for just a couple of um, emphasis today. Um, the Grace Conference, please don't forget, it's coming up May 18th and 19th. We're starting on a Thursday. You know, this house, we don't do very elongated meetings. We want meetings that are powerful. A lot of you have experienced the ministry of Reverend Bob Andor. He, his life is grace. His life is grace. A totally illiterate person, never went to school or that kind of thing, who speaks like that and who prays like that. He has bought half of a city. This last time, Ami and I were in their city in Ghana to do leadership. I mean, he owns half of the city. And there's grace on him. And I want him to come through this house. So 18th and 19th, Thursday and Friday, 7 p.m. Then on Sunday, 9, then of course, Gen X at 11.30. So please, 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 uh, don't you forget. And then our legacy project is coming up. We want to do something for our young ones. For those who were in the prayer meeting yesterday, uh, uh, Pastor Brian was here. I'm sure you heard some of the powerful things he said and the letter testimonies that I gave. So please do not forget. If you haven't pledged, if you haven't given, let's give to this. You know, remember he said that people my age don't do new projects like that. But it tells the measure of person I am. I'm, I'm thinking about who is, who is here and who does what when I'm not here. So please, 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 whatever we do, let's do that. There's been a little tweak in our leadership. Um, you know, our operations leader, um, uh, our minister Lulu, but um, we had to do a little uh, tweak because of some determinations that he had. So, uh, Minister John right now is going to be our operations minister right now, and Brother Lulu will do other things. So, just to let you know, um, that, that's the deal. 
Um, Yvonne, 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 we are going to play your thing. Are you going to sing? Uh, thank you for not singing. You are bringing me money. Then what are you going to do with that? You have 91 seconds. Your time started three seconds ago. Thank you. Good morning, church. My name is Grace. Um, I say that because really my name is Grace. Um, I'm a product of this house, not by my own power, um, because I've been taught well by Papa, Emma, and Mary, and of course, awesome pastors in the house. I give glory to God. And by the grace of God, uh, um, I have a song that is coming out on May 10, and I thought it wise. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I thought it wise that because I, I mean, I, I, this is my home. And uh, why not let the, um, the church see it first before it comes out on Wednesday? Um, so with the, um, the privilege that I have, I don't take it for granted. Um, I want you all to see um, the song. Um, just the reason why the song came out was uh, I work in the healthcare field. I know a lot of you work in the healthcare field uh, during COVID. Uh, we went through a lot and uh, um, the experience I went through and uh, um, how I felt is uh, came out with a song. So I just want to say thank you, Papa, for the opportunity to serve here as well. Um, enjoy. This is, uh, the title is In This Place, In This Place, In This Place. Anywhere can be your place. Please hold, please hold, please hold, please hold. Oh, no, no, you won't, we don't have too much time. Don't hold, please. I'll do the first, the, the reason for the song first so they will see it. Um, I just want them to have the meaning to the song. It's important. Yeah, we know the song already. <laughs> <laughs> the reason for your presence, Lord. Jesus, we need your presence, Lord. Come be in our midst, come flow in our midst, oh God. We need you, we need you, we need your presence, Lord. There are a lot of gifts and talents amongst us. We are proud when you bring it out. Amen. 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 So let's not forget the weekend activities. Friday, mothers at the altar. When women pray, when mothers pray, when mothers intercede for their children and loved ones, things happen. And on Saturday, it's going to be an awesome time, a purposeful woman it's very it's going to be very conversational so the young the old you are all invited let's show up and i believe you're going to have a good time and of course sunday is our thanksgiving service amen 
There's a lady in our midst this morning. God has been good to her. I know her story a little bit. And today, actually yesterday, she turned 50. And so, Irene, if you are here, you want to step up. You want to come forward. When she sent me a text this morning, immediately I called her. And I was so overwhelmed because I know where God brought her from. And God is a good God. If I were to give the mic to her, she would have so many things to say. <laughs> but this morning, with an attitude of gratitude, she's here to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take my microphone. Preach. <laughs> good uh, good morning, church. I I am a very shy person and I can't say much, but all I'm saying is I thank God for bringing me this far. It's been a journey for me. I came I don't know. I was so naive growing up. I guess I was spoiled, but <laughs> <laughs> when I began to face the challenges of life, I had a different worldview. Um, I've had some, but God has taken me through all of them. And I stand here as a healthy person because of the grace of God. Thank you. It's true. She was very spoiled. Rene is the daughter of the king of my town, Cove Town the paramount chief, very powerful, gracious man. So she comes with a very powerful stock. I see her every Sunday cleaning. No, we've been through a lot, but we thank God. Father, today, thank you for my daughter. Nana, we join with you and Frank and the boys to thank God. We thank him for your year of jubilee. We sound the spiritual trumpet and we say anything that is yours that has been held back let there be a release. In this your 50th year I bless you and I say enter into rest. Rest from all your labors. Rest from all the fights. May God Almighty give you rest all about from enemies. Separate you for distinction. May the rest of your life be the best of your life. Let the songs of laughter and rejoicing be heard in your tabernacle. Have health that ordinary 50 years don't have. Have peace and wealth that is denied others. Let yours be a story that to be told to encourage. So we bless you today in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. Pastor Ben, should I close the thing and let's go? Please stand, let's, let's go. Let's go home. I don't want... The moment it strikes 12, my chariot will turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> so, Father, I bless this house. I bless your people today. We declare over your people that they are people of exploits. People whose words carry weight. Let this week be a week of good news. A week of strange blessings. Wherever you go, whether you fly, you ride, you drive, you sail... The eternal God be your refuge and the need be the everlasting arms. God Almighty clothe you with goodness. Clothe you with laughter. Clothe you with grace that cannot be explained. So we have declared and so it be. In Jesus name, Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. We'll see you at Gen Next, 11.30 from now and then It doesn't matter, they'll be fine. Listen. If you came, if today is your first time of coming to church, please, I want to wait. I want to see you here. Please come to me. If today is your first time of coming to church, please come to me. Please come to me. I want to, I want to, I want to say something to you. Please come to me.